time in the 2020s, two geeks from across social media formed an alliance to bring you geek news from across the nostalgiaverse. They are Jacob's Toys and Super Soul. So strap yourselves in for the weekly live show that brings you toy news, TV and movie reviews, special guests, opinions, tangents, and bad impressions. Reveals, releases, thoughts, and maybe dreams. So prepare yourselves for the Geek Week in Review. Live. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Geek Week with me, Jacob's Toys, and of course, wonderful one and only Super Soro. This is episode 145 of the Geek Week, and man, have we got lots to talk about tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it has been a busy, busy week. Um, if you're watching us live, please do join in with the comments. We're going out across a handful of different places, so it doesn't matter where you're watching, jump in. <laughs> comment along we'll do our best to sort of stay on top of the comments and and get the comments up on the screen and stuff um if you're watching us on repeat if you're watching us on catch up what's the hashtag they need to use mr super sorrel hashtag catch up crew hashtag catch up crew um yes so that's about it and obviously of course in the description of the videos is all the links to the various other social media platforms that we like to put stuff on oh how's your week been super sorrel fun interesting opened a lot of ties <laughs> yeah i noticed that i did see on your uh on your channel lots of things being open <laughs> must admit I've got, I've got to jump in really quick as well i did like your lord of the rings action figure photography yeah on location i went to pontefract castle with a bunch of figures in my backpack and uh oh it was so fun it was uh there's loads of places i've 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 even got a location set up now because like there's some rocks that are like overlapping and like some that are further in so i'm gonna use some actual green cloth to make it look like merry and uh, sorry the uh, sam and frodo are asleep and i'm gonna put Gollum uh, just I'm, with a bit of blue tack just as if he's coming down the rock just to kind of steady oh, yeah. him Awesome. So yeah, I'm going to take that as a shot this week. I, I saw this little location. I'm like, that is so for that. <laughs> I need to get Gollum on there. I do like it when like people go and do like action figure photography like on location. Like, I really, I, I think it's really cool to be able to kind of look at something huge and kind of scale it right down and go, you know what, that part of it is going to work <laughs> perfectly. I actually, I did a, I did one in Wales actually when we were when we were over in Wales, and I've not, I don't think yeah. I've even posted it anywhere. But there was this huge like cave and I kind of went into it and I found this tiny little bit of a cave. <laughs> <laughs> I put Iron Man Mark one in and I was like, yeah. when I stepped back and looked at it, I was like, this is such a huge like rock face. <laughs> I'm literally using like this much of it. But yeah, it's good fun. It is good fun. Um, so yeah, open lots of toys. There's been lots going on with television. There's been a few things going on with the movies. There's obviously been lots going on with toys. Did Lockdown. you uh, did you get, get any pickups this week? Uh, one thing came through. Uh, yeah. Where is it? One thing. I put it in my box behind me. I've not even opened it. It's not anything exciting. Lots of people have got it already. But yeah, it's Um, initial inspection. Like looking at it, a little bit disappointed that he's got pinned legs. It's just kind of like at this kind of day and age when. Mm. The technology's out there it just feels a little bit lazy but overall it looks like a really nice figure and the size of it's cool and i must admit i'm really surprised how cool the uh the wolverine is as well um i got rid of a lot of wolverine figures recently like a <laughs> lot of wolverine figures so it's quite cool to have a a civilian wolverine yeah. especially after x-men 97 kind of coming out like mm. i'm enjoying the civilian clothed characters what about yourself yeah, you got a couple of things that I have to I have to just show this great big box off. Uh, well, let's say big box, medium box, medium box. Yeah. So I got sent this box from the people at Stumble Guys this week. What? No way. So yeah, Stumble Guys got in contact, PMI Toys, and they said, uh, "Can we send you a box of Stumble Guys?" Because I put I posted a couple of things on Instagram that I was playing it, and uh, they sent me a thing saying, "Would I like some of the toys?" I'm like, "Yeah." So the, I, I'm going to unbox. I'm going to I'm going to put that as a shot on my channel tomorrow. So this is just a bit of a tease uh, that I've got this box, and I'm going to open it tomorrow as a shot on my channel. So they, stay are tuned. They bag figures? Are they like? Can't... Oh, there's a mix of things in there. There's a mix of things in there. There's a bit like when I got the. Um, what they call it? Pinata smashlings. There's a, there's like, there's plushies. There's mystery bags. There's figures. There's, there's a good mix in there. 
Oh, wow. That's cool. So, yeah. And uh, I saw this in the comic book store. And I'm not sure if anyone remembers this from back in the day, but I got really excited when I saw it. Do you remember oh. Emily the Strange? Yeah. So, like, back in the day, she was, like, on all the gothic girls' clothing, uh, like, Hot Topic and Blue Banana. Or, sorry, Blue, Blue Banana Republic is called? And like all those kind of shops, the, she was like the icon for a while, and yeah. she was um, also on skateboards and stuff like back in the early two thousands and nineties. So yeah, Emily Strange, I couldn't resist. It was just such a weird little figure to find. I'm like, I have to own this. Is it a new figure or an old? Yeah, so it's it's a new it's a new toy. It's brand new for this year. It's only just come out. Uh, it was imported by Heo dot com, and it came out um, twenty twenty three. So it's relatively new. It's the first time I've ever seen it, put it that way. I'm not surprised, though. With all the kind of hype of um, Wednesday and the kind of gothic, yeah. like, it, it's a <clears throat> easy cash-in. You know I, mean? I noticed that HMV recently, because they've got their, like, what, I don't know what, what you would call it. They're trying to have a gothic section, aren't they? They, have, they sort of have the Five Nights at Freddy's, the horror stuff. Then they have, like, the Wiccan candles and crap and... You yeah. know, all that kind of stuff. And they had Emily the Strange hats, beanies, and hoodies on display. So I think Emily the Strange is making a comeback at the minute. Oh, okay. Fair play. Fair play. But the thing that I know some of the people in the chat are excited for me to open this week, I've now got I've now got four of them because I can't resist. Uh, I got the Star Wars Dorables inside the mini Death Star. Oh, nice. Have you not opened any of them yet? Nope. Nope. Wow. I'm going to save them. I'm going to, I'm going to open all four together on a video this week. I'm going to make a big video and I'm going to open all four together. There's four in each one. So I should have stand a good chance at getting something different. So yeah, that's cool. If I, I didn't know if I get, yet. yeah, the one they've just lit, literally launched. So the, 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 the just, they're just showing up in uh, Smith's Smith's are sods though. Cause they do this thing where they have the, they have their online thing to check if something's in stock, but like Sheffield was showing that these things weren't even in stock yet, but yeah, I went to the store and they were all on display. So someone's put them out when they shouldn't have been, but they scanned through the tills. So I'm like, that mine. <laughs> yeah. Straight in my basket. Well, I know that we've, um, we've spoken about them quite a bit, haven't we on the show mm. like, over the previous week. So yeah, that's cool. Um, I'd be interested to see how, collectible the kind of figures are because star wars that's a big it's a big deal like mm -hmm. i can see those making well, their way onto quite a few people's shelves if you want to go full 90s hang on what's he got we spun around we can't see we can't see and we've got to sing the song if oh, we okay. lived into each other's heart oh wow Go the goofy it's movie really and and yes, the reason for buying it, power line. Wow. <laughs> At <a>. <laughs> <laughs> <Just such> a... <laughs> Such a such um, a an iconic tune. It's like an anthem. <laughs> it is like an anthem. What really cracks me up with that as well is when you get like the full grown men like in costume doing the dance at Disney <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Like I just it's brilliant. It's like that's awesome. Yeah, it's because of Disney Plus. Apparently, um, obviously, the film bombed when it came out originally. It was it was meant to be a Disney uh, Channel movie, and then it went out to cinemas and stuff, and it just bombed. Oh, but um, yeah, but then it's like over the years because of Disney Plus as well. It's kind of found a new audience and a new life a bit. Yeah, there's loads yeah, of merch yeah. out for it now. Loads of movies do that though, don't they? Yeah. Like loads of them that, that you know that they aren't that well, great at the time, but. Yeah. I'll tell you what movie I did finally get around to see and while we talk about movies. Mm. Two movies that I saw this week. Mm. Ghostbusters, hence the, yeah. hence the hoodie today. Um, we can talk about as well. um, and Barbie. I finally got around to watching Barbie. <gasps> Barbie! I love that movie. Yeah. I didn't. <gasps> I really didn't. I, I watched it all, but I just, yeah, it just... Not even the I'm just Ken. Yeah, see that bit I really enjoyed. I, I thought that was really cool. And there was some very there were some very funny like jokes in it. Like I think my favorite bit was Will Will Ferrell when he goes, Call me mother. <laughs> that was that was my favorite bit. But there was a lot of it that was kind of like not lost on me, but I just I don't think it hit me in the right places, if that makes sense. Yeah, the but, bit uh, like, my favorite like audience. My favourite joke in the whole thing is where the narrator comes on and says that they're trying to make you uh, feel sorry for for you know, oh, they've yeah, hired, yeah. but they've hired uh, Margot Robbie and she's the you know the prettiest woman alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> cool. the best joke um, of the But it came onto Sky Cinema, so obviously it launched mm. on Sky Cinema. So we we're like, yeah, that's fine. We'll we'll sit down and watch it tonight. So me and my wife watched it. 
And I was just, I don't know whether my expectations were just so high, but yeah, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, that kind of wasn't what I was expecting at all. Um, but yeah, since being on Sky Cinema, it's been on our telly maybe about four or five times. My daughter's watched it, my wife's watched it. Like, I was like, okay, cool, cool. Um, but Ghostbusters, let's talk Ghostbusters yeah. for a second. Because obviously, when we discussed it last week, I hadn't seen it. And now I have. And you know what? The critics can do one because I yeah. thought it was incredible. I really did. I thought it was spot on for a Ghostbusters. Um, a, a Ghostbusters film, yeah. Um, hang on, two secs. Look, we've got Andy. Andy's in the chat. He's he's watching us on Facebook, and he said he's not ignoring anyone. He just can't load up the chat on YouTube. Barbie was dreadful. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll tell you what, Andy. We'll we'll keep an eye out for your comments, and we'll uh, we'll ping ping them up so people can follow along. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed Ghostbusters. I hmm. I thought it was spot on for a Ghostbusters film. Makes sense. <laughs> How are you feeling about them including supernatural humans in it now? So, like, there's bits like I, I get there's ghosts and they're from other realms or whatever, and I kind of get that the whole multiverse theory and all that kind of stuff. But um, when they start including like the fire starter or whatever you were called, the fire bringer, and he can move fire with his hand, and yeah, uh, I was that was the only bit that I was like, oh, I don't like that, but eh, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? But yeah, I, yeah, that was the bit that I was kind of like, oh, I don't like that. But yeah, that that bit for me, I'm I'm with you on on that opinion. That was the only bit that I was kind of like, um, okay, um, but I saw it as very contained, if that makes sense. Like it mm -hmm. was there for that story. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like we're gonna have loads of random, sort of supernaturally kind of people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I just thought, you know what, that's that's for that story, and maybe we're not going to see that again. But no, I mean, as a whole, I loved seeing Slimer again, and I think mm -hmm. that the inclusion of Slimer was just enough. Like mm -hmm. they did Slimer in the way that they they need to do Slimer. Like because mm -hmm. in the previous movies, he was just there for a, a minute. You know, I mean, he wasn't a big character, was he? So no. They, they never explained. The they never explained how he got out of the containment unit. They've not explained that though, have they? They're just he's just there. No, but seeing my own little kind of head cannon, I was kind of like, you know what? On the real Ghostbusters, he lived at the fire. Yeah, anyway. he did. So the if fact we including that, that as cannon. Yeah. So okay. the fact that he was living up in the loft kind of thing, I was like, you know mm. what? This is kind of this all kind of makes sense. Um, I really love the fact that like the the family are kind of taking it over and that they're kind of continuing with it. Um, I love the, the expanded kind of universe of Ghostbusters that I thought that was really cool. And it just felt like a very natural progression. You know, if one of the original Ghostbusters has that money, then of course they're going to kind of expand, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think my only, I think one of my only real criticisms was that Bill Murray felt like Bill Murray was in it just and just the right amount that they could afford to have him in it. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. It's a shame he wasn't in it more, like like the way that um, Dan Aykroyd was, for example. He was very much a character in the film, wasn't he? Whereas Bill Murray just kind of turned up. <laughs> he was like and did a little I bit do, here and there and then left. I do feel like that's because of Bill Murray, though. I don't think he wants a massive involvement in this anymore. Whereas I think yeah. Zed Demol, you know, the, I, I, you know, uh, Winston still loves Winston. being a part. Of, yeah, Winston still loves being a part of this, and so does like Ray. I yeah. think they, they're, they're, they're the two actors that still hang on to the legacy of Ghostbusters. Where I think Bill Murray's kind of like, I think it was a job to him, and he's moved on now. Yeah. I don't think he's got that same attachment to Ghostbusters that the other two have. No. No, no, no. Well, obviously, you know, for Dan Aykroyd, it's kind of like his baby. His big, it? yeah, you know, his big like, film with the, uh, um, yeah. But yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. I really did. I really did enjoy it. And I like Janine was kind of there. And it was just what I, what I kind of wish people kind of took was, you know, we saw him in, we saw Janine suit up for no other mm. reason than just for us to see Janine suit up you know <laughs> that was that was it like it was kind of like you know what it's cool to see her in a suit and i, I was messing around with the playmobil figures that, that we that my boys got and that because we play mm. them all the time and we've got janine suited up in playmobil like we've had her suited up for ages <laughs> and i was mm. like oh oh there we go 
Um, yeah. Um, just quickly, let's just jump on because I know there's a couple of comments here. <laughs> Andy's saying the bit about the project projection didn't bother me that much as there was an episode of Real Ghostbusters where they went to the spirit world. But as Ash said, it was contained well. Yep. Um, and Ernie Hudson has sold his soul to the devil because there's no way on earth he's 79. <laughs> I know the man looks incredible. Um, yeah, looks absolutely incredible. Um, do you think they yeah. missed an opportunity though, where you know, where the bit where Phoebe's been told to stay behind the phone rings and she answers it and then goes off and does the ghosty bit with her with podcast? Yeah, yeah do you yeah. not think they missed an opportunity to have her say Janine's line from the original Ghostbusters film? Ghostbusters, what do you want? There was a yeah. bit where she could have literally, she was in that pissed off mood anyway, that could have just easily just had her say it. You know what I mean? Ghostbusters, what do you want? You know what I mean? Yeah. It would have just, and I think that would have been just a, a bit of fan service. I know yeah. it's so little, but I just think there was a missed opportunity. Yeah. Um, Mick has asked if we can have an episode about Jacob's beautiful grey beard. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's getting more and more grey. I actually cut it quite short this week just because it was like, this beard is getting seriously yeah. great, but thanks very much. We'll do a special. We'll do a gig. I'm sitting, I'm I'll sitting go. farther away and I've got all black on, so you can't tell, but my mind is, mine is graying more and more as the days go on. <laughs> we'll do a, maybe my we'll mustache a is completely gray now. My mustache has gone completely gray now. We'll do a gig. <sighs> so we get an, as many, um, like YouTubers, Instagrammers with gray facial hair as possible. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I just, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I liked seeing the original cast kind of doing what they were doing. I liked the progression of the, the newer cast. And I think one of the biggest criticisms that I have read online is about the kind of relationship between Phoebe and the, the, oh, the spirit. Yeah. But I was kind of expecting more because I read that as a criticism. I was kind mm. of like, oh, okay, it was limited to that. But there was a point to it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? There was a, a point to that. If if there wasn't that whole scene where she kind of went out of her body and all that kind of stuff, and the big bad, I can't remember the name of the ghost, but you know, if it wasn't for them having to do that, it was all a setup the whole way along, and it kind of felt like just enough to explain that plot point. Well, yeah, and the fact that, oh, I hate the internet for this kind of stuff. Move on, it's we're in, we're in the twenty tens for God's sake, twenty twenties for God's sake. Um, but um, like yeah i think it felt natural the way they did it it didn't feel like it was an agenda it didn't feel forced it didn't feel like they were trying to make phoebe gay or anything for the sake of it you know what i mean the 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 the, the progression of the story between them felt natural yeah whereas you know whereas you look at like the beauty and the beast movie the live action one and you look at that for god's sake josh gadd playing you know gaston's you know your know, fancy piece and yeah. that was forced that was incredibly forced for agenda whereas yeah. this felt like it fit the story and it fit phoebe's character it just yeah. it all felt natural but you know what i didn't even watch it as a romantic relationship it was mm. kind of like i saw it very much almost like a rebellious thing as in like you yeah. know what she's being pushed out by the um by the family She's been kind of benched. She's been treated like a kid, but yet she's, you know, got this incredible IQ and all that kind of stuff. And it was kind of like, you know what, this is this is the direction I'm going in. Because I don't think yeah. if she hadn't been benched, I don't think she would have humoured any kind of relationship with a ghost mm. from the beginning. Do you know what I mean? It would have been, well, that's my job, you know. But I, I don't know. I just felt like it was a good a good way of her being the downfall with it making sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved all what? the little like nods to the, um, like the library ghost and all those kind of things. Like the, the, uh, the manager of the library telling that Ray that he was banned and all that kind of stuff. I, I just, I loved it. I, I just thought it was brilliant. <laughs> what Raka, did you thank you very much, Andy Hyde. How do you know this? How do you remember this stuff? Oh, Garaka with, with his horns from once um, you came, you shall remain to our complete again. Mick has made a good point. Supernatural humans have been in it since day dot because that was Peter Venkman's field in supernatural research. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. We'll give you that one. No, I do not. I get there's like clairvoyancy and mediumship and because that all fits in with the ghosty stuff. But I mean, I'm talking like that guy was basically pyro. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> that that the, that's where I'm getting at. It was almost muted, like mu- like mutated kind of thing. That was where I was like, mm, but I, I get it. It's, it is what it is. Like I say, I, it didn't bother. It didn't bother me enough that it wound me up. I just that was one of the, crit- no. crit- the criticism that I had. But um, what do you think of um, my theory now that you've seen it? The you remember my theory. Film. So that there's going to be a third film, and that I reckon they they introduced that whole thing of the being able to pull a spirit out of an object. Yeah. That to me says that Winston's got an idea to take the ghosts out of things. Therefore, I think they're going to put the big painting of Vigo in there and try and rip Vigo out of the painting to contain him, yeah. and no, something's going to go wrong. And then it, he'll did go I for see the it right as well. That there was one point when they're in that ghost corpse play, uh, Ooh, yeah. ghost corpse or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. in the background, one of the people had the slime guns. I'm sure they did. Like it was, I, I, there was oh the slime guns. Was, yeah, there was a slime yeah. gun. Yeah, yeah. They walk past, and in the background, in like you got glass, slimed. They're using the the pink guns that they used in the second film. I'm sure they More were. Or less. Oh, so yeah. some form of goo gun or slime gun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, there we go. Look, Mick said Slimer got out in Ghostbusters one. At the end, remember the hot dog cart, and you don't see him catch it. They don't see them catch him again. Oh, it's been such a long time since I've sat and watched Ghostbusters one. You know what? I'd completely kind of forgot that that was a thing. Yeah, you're right. And I think right. I think I've I've not seen Ghostbusters two since I were about fifteen, sixteen. It's yeah, not see, one of the films I, I watch watch. all the time. I wanted to rewatch it after we discussed it last week and I was trying, mm. I know I've got it on DVD up in the loft, but I was kind of like, I don't want to go up in the loft and get it. I want to find it somewhere. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah, it was just, it was just a lot of fun. And just mm. to, uh, just to approach one of the other criticisms that I saw online. So one of the biggest kind of discussion points, shall we say, was people saying that they should have done less kind of story stuff and more, ghost busting and seeing them like hunting all the different ghosts and all the rest of it but i totally disagree i completely disagree i think there was just the right level of busting ghosts because again in the original films it isn't all zap 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 like they would get called out they'd do a job that would lead on to one thing then there'd be a load of story arc and conversation and then there would be something else and i think that yeah i i think that they did just enough you know Mm. yeah no definitely um same with them um, because i know there were the, the, the like like i say the, the, the talk about the whole you know there's not enough go- ghosty bit but you see so many cameos from so many different ghosts in this film the whole opening segment is them busting a ghost for god's sake you know mm. what i mean it's it's no i think it was just the right amount and it was we needed the story more than them just zapping random ghosts for the sake of it yeah you need a yeah, story yeah. this i think this was the perfect build-up to the big bad admittedly i think the big bad could have had more to do at the end but it you know it, yeah eh, they could have spanned that one out into two films i think quite easily they could have but then again i think that's one of the mistakes a lot of films make is that kind yeah. of to introduce this thing and then drag it out it was all contained mm. it was very yeah, much yeah. like here's the threat level well actually the brass and all the rest of it this is what is going to beat him and guess what we were able to do it and you know i think if if i was to add anything in i would like to have seen a little bit of tragedy so maybe janine or venkman or someone like that one of them gets murdered actually dies or actually gets like seriously injured just something to kind of make it all a little bit but then at the same token i'm a massive fan of the real ghostbusters i grew up watching the cartoon you know i loved the movies as a kid and they were almost immortal do you know what i mean like they were mm-hmm. kind of invincible in that respect so yeah i just thought it was a good ghostbuster film i really do i think it just you know okay answer the call didn't go down particularly well I like but it. the rest of them they're all very similar they're a bit tongue-in-cheek they're classed as a comedy do you know what i mean that's that's the funny thing you go on ghostbusters one on sky cinema or netflix or mm-hmm. wherever it is that you whatever streaming site it's listed as a comedy you know it's not listed as a as a an, a an adult horror or anything like that it's it's a comedy family comedy film so yeah i loved it i loved it and i'm just annoyed that we haven't had any plasma series figures for it now yeah we'll get on to that okay. later though because we we've got something coming the original if they were to do um if they, if they were to do plasma series figures, what were they? What would they actually do? Like the original three, even older. <laughs> the the new characters, a little bit older. 
Like if you're really desperate for a Paul Rudd, you could use one of your Ant Man heads and put him on a on a suit. You know what I mean? It's it's doable. To be fair, I think Hasbro dodged a bullet because if they'd have gone by the original trailer, I think all the figures would have been in red parkers and they didn't. Yeah. They barely feature in the movie if at all. So I mean, yeah, yeah. First time they've not released a figure that's kind of like missed the mark in that respect. So yeah, yeah. But there we go. But yeah, that was that was kind of it for the movies. But let's we have got loads to talk about. So let's um yeah. Um just quickly, Mick said, I didn't see it as a romantic thing either. Jacob, it sounds like she's seen it. No, for me I was just on about like, for me for me it was the build up of the whole her like the wanting to be on the same plane of existence for even just them two minutes. That felt a little bit like the relationship was yeah, progressing and i get that i do get that, that, that that's was how i read it. anyway me watching it the way i did it didn't quite make sense i was like why do you want mm. to be a ghost for two minutes that's weird i you know but yeah it was good it was good but let's move on we've got um we've got quite a bit we've got quite a bit yeah um, should we stick with entertainment stuff and jump into x-men yeah. 97 and he said he was almost mutated ash just dropped a segue into x-men 97 <laughs> um yes let's talk x-men 97 what an episode yeah and marvel legends obviously dropped a dropped the um goblin yeah what's she called um yeah madeline Pryor. i'm saying madeline prior figure and they dropped her all covered up and, but yeah in the program she's completely like she is in the comics they didn't they didn't cover her up like i was expecting to see her looking like the figure in kind of a watered down version of her costume but yeah they went all out no nope. Triple G in the comment in the comments. Love this episode. It was yes, a great was episode. Um, yeah, that was my first comment. That was going to be my first comment that they did not, they did not like water her down at all, did they? They nope. gave her the full kind of Madeline Pryor treatment, which was really cool. Um, and we yeah, know why was, Bishop was there now. <laughs> yep, that's why Bishop was back. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it's, it's all, but it all makes sense. It all makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, and. Yeah, that's why Bishop was was stuck there because then he could take the baby with him. Um, I really enjoyed it though. I just thought it was a very mm. entertaining, um, good X Men episode. Like, there's there's not a yeah. huge amount to. I was expecting them to keep her as a villain though for the most of the series. I know we're definitely going on for a Mister Sinister kind of showdown, but um, I did expect them to keep her under his control a little bit longer than that. It was just the one episode and done. So I hope I hope the do keeper as a reoccurring character in it. I hope she's not just written out now. I wonder if we're going to see Cable. That'll be cool. Whether he's going to come back from the future. Mm. Um, it the thing is, is that it's very in line with how X Men was like the original animated series, oh, yeah. and apart from the odd kind of two parters, the stories were wrapped up. Yes, I contain. And that's a very nineties thing to do with kind of television mm. and shows and stuff like that. You've got a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and yeah, I I just think that it was kind of like, you know what? I was quite happy with that. It's the same. We had that executioner character that again we got a figure of kind of wrapped up in an episode. Not ne don't necessarily need to see them again. We had Madeline Pryor, Goblin Queen as you say, wrapped up in an episode. But you mentioned the toys and obviously the, the Marvel Legends figures. Mr. Sinister is a figure that we've not had as part of the X-Men 97 card back yet. Yeah. But yet Nightcrawler is. We've had Nightcrawler on that X-Men 97 card back and we've not seen him yet. Yep. So... And we've seen a lot of characters, haven't we? Like They've shown us more characters because of Morph than we have previously uh that triple g in the comments say love seeing my favorite character magic get some love yeah um, yeah really cool to see magic in the animated series which is something i never really i didn't see happening in x-men 97. i was just i just wish it was the real her not just morph you know what i mean i wish they would introduce these characters properly like bring psylocke in and you know what i mean like yeah. bring these cool characters into it that is the only kind of even if it's just a self-contained story, like you say, a one and done, have have magic show up with Colossus. You know, it's his, it's his sister, and just have them show up together. 
in an mm. episode and have a self-contained little story where they're you know jumping through gate gates of hell or whatever but um I you know what i mean like there's so, so much they could do with it i wonder whether that's what's going to be with nightcrawler mm. whether that's going to be um he's going to be like a self-contained story um and that's why we're getting a figure of him potentially but yeah overall i just thought it was a very good episode so it's a very good episode um mr sinister felt a lot more sinister in this one than i think i remembered him mm. being in the original series well the fact that he just stole a baby and shoved it in a in a cryogenic chamber like get him there just stole a baby put it covered him in a virus and yeah um yeah no i just i'm enjoying it i am really enjoying it it's just it's you don't have to think too much it's just kind of like yeah it's saturday morning cartoon like that's that's how it feels you know um but it's not yeah. lost it's uh it's not lost its edge has it it's still very much in keeping with the comic books they've not because it's a disney plus show and it's we've times have moved on from the 90s i was expecting this to be a watered down version of the 90s show but they're they're going all out with it yeah, it's just like it was yeah, they're keeping the storylines quite quite harsh. Um, mm. Triple G, again, in the comments, said he agrees. Love Morph, but he's been used as a cameo vehicle. Yeah, yeah he is. that's a good way of putting it. A cameo vehicle is very good kind of explanation of him. And it's a shame because I think in this last episode, what with Sinister and that backstory, there was really an opportunity to kind of give us some emotion from Morph and kind of... Mm. But there wasn't, was there? It was like that little bit where he just kind of explained who he was, and that was it. Like it was, it was almost a paragraph, and then it was done. Whereas, you know, even just kind of some kind of PTSD kind of level of anxiety and stuff that would go with him knowing that Sinister was back on the scene. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But they didn't. So. Yeah, I think we're going to get Emma Frost as a bit of a villain in this one as well, because we know the Hellfire Club's going to be in it at some point. So I'm wondering whether this time, because they use, because they used Sebastian Shaw and all those guys last time, I wonder whether yeah. they'll use Emma Frost as like the main sort of leader of Hellfire Club this time. Well, they've put her in that original line that in the lineup at the beginning, haven't they? Mm -hmm. So they've they've taken out like the unnamed, which went on to be Gremlin character, the little pink headed dude in the green jumpsuit, mm -hmm. and they've replaced him with Emma Frost and Deathstroke. Yeah, I think it's Deathstroke. Yeah. Death, no, not Deathstroke. Oh, what's her name? Deathstroke's a bloody DC character. Lady Deathstrike. Lady Deathstrike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know God. you I know who you meant straight away. Yeah. I just yeah. <laughs> oh, darn me with my uh, mixing up of my characters. Um, but yeah, so they've replaced them with them. So we've already seen her briefly. So I wonder whether Emma Frost, like you say, will actually feature a little mm. bit more. Who knows? And obviously Lady Deathstrike's one of the Morlocks, isn't she, in the in the in this? So wouldn't, yeah, yeah, so and, she, and Magneto's kind of freeing the Morlocks and giving them a place to live. So I wonder whether she's going to show up in his new utopia kind of thing. Yeah. One thing I am surprised about as well, and I don't know whether this would have messed it or enhanced it, but with Magneto kind of taking over the school and everything, mm -hmm. I'm really a little bit disappointed that he's not brought some people with him, like kind of, you know, Mystique honorary or... students. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. just to to see that kind of the drama that would unfold having like once villains uh, once enemies kind of sharing the x-men title and all that kind of stuff but mm. you know who no they seem they're really going for this whole thing with rogue aren't they they're really playing on this rogue was once part of the brotherhood and she was with magneto and they're really playing on that storyline yeah i think it's going to come back and i, th I think there's going to be something there that's 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 gonna it did crack me up the way they had booked out the danger room like that was sus <laughs> as like let's be honest when, when he was going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like, every day was like, that wow like these guys are like they are locked in locked in um morlocks not morlocks ravenger thank no, you i know i'm nick i can't think of the names of it all jesus it's been like, no. it's been 10 years since i've read the comics She's give me a ravenger. chance yeah a ravenger with like you know we just had them all in marvel legends as well didn't we like pretty boy and everything yeah you do ah, stopped you caring about marvel legends about two or three years ago okay fair, fair play fair play <laughs> um but yeah um 
Uh, I'm just catching up on the other comments. Yes, but anyway, anyway, yes, yeah, sorry, a Ravenger, not a Morlock. I wasn't even paying attention there. Um, yes, right, okay, on to other entertainment. Bad Batch. Yeah. Yeah, Bethany Beth said, toy news, toy news, toy news. Um, oh, hang on, look. <laughs> Magneto also <laughs> brings Juggernaut as a PE teacher and Sabretooth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, uh, yeah, I can put, yeah, Sabretooth in there. Like, I think it would have been funny. Um, Toy news, toy news, toy news from Bethany Beth. We are getting there. We are getting there. We are very close to our toy news segment. Hold up. Um, Bad Batch, very quickly, in a nutshell, five, ten minute talk quickly. We see the return of... Um, Asajj Ventress. Asajj Ventress. Ventress. Um, which I really liked. I'm not sure about her haircut. Mm. I'm not sure about her choice of haircut. but It was in keeping with what she looked like in the flashbacks when she was younger. She had that yeah. same flippy bit um yeah they kind of kept that in, in keeping with all the art and comics and things of her and yeah. her flashback sequences from the clone wars uh but no i'm looking forward to it and um i'm all i'm all for it i'm all for it yeah i'm really enjoying it i think it's we've got quite a few episodes left so you know there's not even i haven't even got any predictions yet it's... oh the, the the actress that plays her has already said because like a lot of people were saying how did she survive they didn't even touch on it there were a lot of people like commenting about that this week and she put a thing out say on twitter and stuff basically saying you know stay tuned she's in she's in more than one episode <laughs> so okay. and don't forget don't forget what people are forgetting is well, obviously we've just had all the live action stuff with boba fair and all this storyline how and we know that we know that in the modern day we're leading into this whole cloning thing it's very much air of the empire they're using that storyline again but yeah. don't forget asajj ventress was one of the characters that did help raise Boba Fett from being a boy into being a full-fledged bounty hunter. She was one of the people that helped him along the way. So I've got a feeling we're going to see a cameo from a, what would he be at this point, a young a young man version of 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 Boba Fett. And obviously he's going to he's going to look like the rest of the clones. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. I think there should be. I want to see an interaction between Boba Fett and the clones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because be... he looks like them. Because he, it's you know, it's same actor. <laughs> That'd be very interesting. Very interesting. Right, let's talk toys because we've got lots to talk about. And conscious of time, <coughs> let's go on to toys. Let's go on to toys. Where do we even start with toy news this week? Um, the weird thing that Marvel did this week, which was drop some random Deadpool figures. Yes, we. Had... And I love, I love the fact that they're called le le legacy figures. And Wolverine it's... was never in Deadpool to be a legacy figure, but we all know he's in the third film. Well, no, yeah. no, no, you know they've classed this. This ver this is what really gets me is that they've well, classed this version as the version of Wolverine that we see in the flashback scene post credit in Deadpool Two. Oh, behave! No, yep. that's what it was linked as. <laughs> so it's essentially um, <laughs> what was that? That was uh, Wolverine. That's... <laughs> was it the wolverine or the wolverine yeah, the yeah. Wolverine. that feels like plot armor by hasbro that feels like hasbro's going don't kill us we want to cash in and release a wolverine again yeah <laughs> it's this version from the app from the that brief after credit sequence <laughs> so there's two things about these two uh... figures that that stand out straight away so i mean three things if you include the obvious that they are just repacked the Deadpool seems to have the the guns seem to be removable this time from the holsters. Yeah. Whereas I don't know if you remember when these first there were came static out. Ones few, yeah. <clears throat> and there was loads of people. There was loads of kind of like tutorials going around of how to remove them and how to melt the glue and cut the glue and all that kind of stuff. But you know, making that very simple change does make the figure ultimately a little bit better but i'm happy for anyone that wasn't able to get hold of it the first time around this is great, oh, great Wol wolverine that. wolverine goes on ebay for upwards of 60 70 quid sometimes i've seen i know in the groups it's different because people don't charge that much but ebay prices wolverine's oh, yeah. expensive now but this wolverine is a mixture so the it's a the mixture of the two yeah yeah the tank top wolverine was the amazon exclusive i want to say or the pulse exclusive it was something yeah, if you um, remember, this is what I did with my Wolverine. I used the head from the other one on, on the body of that one because I liked the tank top Wolverine, but I wanted yeah. the other head. So I basically swapped all the heads over. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they've done. They've taken the two heads out of the other pack and put it in this pack with the, mm, the tank top. They, they were the better heads. Yeah. yeah Straight yeah, away. Yeah. 
Um, my theory with this, and I know that we've discussed it during the week, but we have new Deadpool figures come in. There is oh, no two ways do. about that. There are new Deadpool figures come in. And so, what Hasbro are doing here is they are cashing in quickly before those ones are announced to buy into the character, the, the people that haven't obviously got these Deadpool figures. Because Deadpool in itself would have picked up a fan base since these figures were released. So there are going to be people that want these six inch figures. So I also think people that, because like we always look at it from the perspective of in depth action figure collect your collectors. If these are going to be on the shelf somewhere, if Smiths get these in, say, be people that are just enjoying the movies. We'll grab them. That aren't normally action figure collectors can grab them because it's Wolverine and it's Deadpool, two very recognizable characters straight away that would that yeah. will sell at mass retail. Never mind just to collectors, mass retail these will sell. Oh, massively. Who um, wouldn't Bethany like Beth even even say, non? Sorry, go on. No, just saying. Bethany Beth said not seen the guns loose yet, but if you went back, you saw in the pictures that Sol just put through. There was a picture there with the guns out of the that. There you go. So they're they're pictured out of the the holsters. So that's where people are picking that up Whoop. from this from these uh, product pictures. Crotch up. Um, but yeah, you're you're yeah, that's Deadpool. <laughs> um, but you're completely right. These are genuine. Like that figure on the shelf, kids would pick it up, adults would pick it up. Like yeah. it's a decent I think, Deadpool figure to have on display. Yeah, even I was thinking, like, even if you were an action figure collector and you were just a bit of a geeky gamer or into your comic books or whatever, if you saw that Deadpool on a shelf and it were 20 quid, you'd be like, yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Even if you were an action figure collector, you kind of look at that figure and go, that's a really cool Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool's and one of them characters, isn't it? It's just, it sells. I I class these two very much as like gateway figures that, yeah. like you say, the the standard collector that might not have the standard fan that might not have ever have heard of Marvel Legends as a brand, like ever, would pick one of these up and go, oh, "This is brilliant!" Oh, Marvel Legends, and then Google and then fall down that rabbit hole. So they mm -hmm. are very much kind of gateway figures, um, but they are a massive cash in. Let's be honest, there is one hundred percent. 100% figures for this Deadpool film coming out. So they've officially called tomorrow. Well, uh, yeah, tomorrow. They've officially called tomorrow April Pool's Day. Yeah. They are ramping up for, for Deadpool 3 now. And tomorrow yep. is officially is officially a Deadpool Day. They're, yep. April Fool's Day is April Pool's Day. And I reckon tomorrow we're going to get a full trailer because we've only had a teaser trailer so far. I reckon tomorrow we're going to get the full trailer drop and I reckon Hasbro are going to announce some figures. That's where I think tomorrow. Because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But they've, why have they gone out of the way to announce it as April Pool's Day if they didn't have something planned? Yeah, I agree. Did you see um, the um, leaked picture of the potential two-pack? Yeah, we yeah. knew that. Were, come on, we knew that were coming anyway. So we don't know, obviously, whether this is a real image or whether it's just somebody's like having a bit of a Photoshop and stuff. But there is essentially a photo doing the rounds of a yellow suited Wolverine and a Deadpool that's too fuzzy to kind of work out exactly how he looks. Um, doing the rounds as a two pack, supposedly releasing for quarter three, uh, 2024. So. It would make sense. It would make a lot of sense. I reckon that'll be the two pack that's announced tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I really I, I'm I'm kind of with you on it. Um and I just think I think for, for, for Hasbro, for Marvel Legends, there isn't a lot of MCU based or Marvel Legend uh, Marvel movie based properties that they can get figures out for. Mm -hmm. So their their releases are very heavily aimed at the comic book fan at the moment and not the movie fan. And I think Deadpool being the one that they can do stuff for, I think they're going to go all out. I'm really surprised that with, obviously, there being a Deadpool movie out this year, a Venom movie out, there's a lot of Fox products. I'm honestly really surprised they've not worked out some form of deal to do a best of Fox wave or and then just release a bunch of, like, because how, how cool would it be to have a Jennifer Garner Electra or, uh, you know what I mean? Because we know they're going to feature in the movie because they're already credited. So, yeah. I mean, even if they just released them from the old movie and they didn't use the new licensing, just, you know, it's the original Dead, you know, Daredevil movie. Here's, a, you know, uh, an Affleck and a Garner. People would buy them. 
Yeah, people buy them up. Or if they re-release the Fantastic Four and you know, and, and try and do some you know, Fantastic Four figures from the old movies or yeah. things like that. Or g- give us some characters from from the X Men Fox movies that we've not had yet. Yeah. They only really did Mystique, Wolverine, Magneto, Charles, and that was kind of it, wasn't it? Cyclops got one. No, there are quite a few no. of them gone. Did Cyclops get a movie? Oh, no, figure? no, you're talking about the recent the Fox re-read. movie ones. Yeah, yeah, the, fo- the Fox the new, movie. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. It was very limited. Very so, I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised they've not gone back, like you're saying, given, a, you know, done a Halle Berry storm and a, I'm yeah. really surprised those haven't randomly shown up yet. Yeah. Because they're bound um, to be in the movie. <laughs> while we're on Deadpool, very quickly, before mm. we move on to the next thing, it's probably a good place to talk about it, but have you heard the latest about Channing Tatum Gambit? Supposedly, no. like, so Hugh Jackman and Channing Tatum's Instagram posts and stuff are all very cryptic. Um, and supposedly there's a bit of stuff going on there that hints towards him cameoing as Gambit in this mm. upcoming film, um, which we've said before would be the ultimate move. If they can give us the Chan and Tatum Gambit that we never got <laughs> in this movie, it would be incredible. Even if he's just sat at that table where Patch is playing cards, even if he's just there at the table, just yeah. that's all. I just want a Gambit you know, throwing a card at a table. That's all I want. <laughs> it's just yeah yeah it would be very very cool um but toys 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 yeah moving on so next next but and i did bit again we've talked about it but now we've had some more news the simpsons do, 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 do. so this is the play set we know now that there's going to be uh four different uh way sorry four different lines there's going to be a yep. basic series a collector series uh, a higher end, there's like a higher end version of them as well, and then there's going to be um, plushies and advent calendars apparently. So oh. this is the basic series because everyone were commenting on the figures, but you know, the play sets and these are the very basic, low level stuff. So yeah. these will be available in like your Smiths and that I reckon. These yeah. are like your kids' toys, but I think they're still. I, I would still want them to be honest. I think it's cool to have their little they're play set good. diorama. Cool. Yeah, yeah, to mean to, to have the house and a, a full playset like that with all the, you know what I mean? That includes Homer and all the original characters. I'm for that. I'm all for that. Yeah. Especially yeah. because they can sit down on the sofa as well. I think that's cool. Oh, and that you can just, you can make them chase each other yeah. around. The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Bethany Beth said some of them are on Amazon US already, um, which is interesting. Um, so we've got a Krusty the Clown, which includes four, uh, 14 phrases. This is a giant plush. That looks um, like but, fuel. Well, on his back, he can change him to be evil Krusty or good Krusty. Oh, wow. And he's got a pull string. So, yeah, that's uh, that's going to that's be fun. Fucking... Yeah. But, yeah, it is nightmare fuel, that, isn't it? Them teeth. Moe's phone. Who's not going to want Moe's phone? Electronic. It does make noise and does do all the things from the TV series. So that's that is that is that's the Simpsons phone, isn't it? Moe's Tavern's call, phone. You're, you're calling Mo. No, that that is the phone from Most Tavern. It says oh, on it Most Tavern. Yeah, yeah, it's got a oh, stick right. on the bottom. Most Tavern. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, People like oh, they always prank call the 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 thing, don't they? The bar. They yeah. always prank call the bar and stuff. So that's the whole. You know, there's going to be loads of electric like jokes and things. I think that's going to come out of it. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. There you go. Includes ten plus pranks. <laughs> that's just a really random. I'm I like it that. though. I'm I'm all for that. I want that. I think that's funny. I'm just thinking about um, like Batman dioramas, like uh, Batman, like uh, <laughs> you could you could literally ba- make the bat phone like out of that. <laughs> and yeah, there's going to be an advent calendar this year for the Simpsons with little figures inside, and they're all holiday themed. Awesome. Um, Andy Hyde said that phone so has to be part of the Geek Week going forward. You both need one each. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm up for that. Yeah, the Simpsons. It's just cool to see new Simpsons stuff coming out. Like it's, it's, it's just cool. Like, and when I say new Simpsons, I know some of the the higher end brands have been doing the Simpsons and all the rest of it. Um, but on the shelf, kids' toys. Like, it's cool to see that level of Simpsons because, like, my my kids all watch Simpsons on Disney Plus. Like, they're all up to the. Like they go back and watched all the old ones and they're watching the new ones and that kind of stuff. So to have new figures and new toys, like my boys would go and buy a Bart Simpson toy, like hands down. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. 
Okay, moving on to WonderCon now. WonderCon. Just quickly, while you're loading your pictures up, Northern Nomad is there and said, I like Taylor. Kit, I can never say his name properly. Kits, Kits, Kish. Oh, I can't remember how to pronounce it. But yeah, the guy with the bowler hat. Um, I didn't mind him, to be fair. He just wasn't Channing Tatum. And at the time, I was kind of like waiting for Channing Tatum. So yeah. yeah. But he was all right. He did okay. I just I wasn't a fan of the bowler hat. <laughs> so WonderCon. Yeah, so I will warn you these are all shots from the screen and stuff like that. The other stuff that has started rolling through, but for easiness, these are all together and it's nice and easy to flick through them all. But uh, credit, we do credit as well to a handful of creators that are out there taking the pictures, uploading them. Um, yeah, so articulated really... points on Instagram is the one that's taken all these ones. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so the Black Series are giving us a Momo Nan Nadan. Uh, it's going to be a fan channel exclusive. I believe this from Clone Wars. I want to say, but okay. um, yeah, uh, I'm not massive loop on that character. So I don't 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 quote me on that, but I think it's Clone oh. Wars. <laughs> My camera's gone off. I'm here still though. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we got that one coming out. It's a Black Series figure. Obviously, ever since they did Doc on now, we know they're going to start slowly releasing more and more of this particular yeah. Star Wars alien. Yeah. Uh, Zeb is getting his uh, release in the in the uh, Vintage series. Nice. Uh, there's his little box. Uh, we're, we're also getting Ezra on card back as well. This is from the Ahsoka series. So it's an updated Ezra. Cool. Uh, we're also getting a Kanan as well, so they, have, they are helping us finish off the uh, the rebels. The rebels, yeah. Um, vintage get, getting some love there. Then we move on to the Marvel stuff. That's where Jacob might have to help us out here. But this is uh, Iron Man, isn't it? The, the, this is the, new, the new retro wave from Toy Biz. I was not like some people were really hyped about this, and I was like, meh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's Mark 20? 30 or 20, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're nice figures. I mean, at one point, I collected every single Iron Man figure that Legends put out. I just had this humongous collection of Iron Man Hall of Armors. And you know what? And I can say this as a recovering collector, like, mm. but it does get there does get a fatigue stage that no matter yeah. how nice the new ones are it is just another iron man and i don't want to i don't want to take anything away from collectors that enjoy iron man because i did for a very long time like i said collected every single one had them all up but yeah it just kind of got to a stage where i just kind of get that fatigue and i think for me personally that's where i am now is it's like okay this is cool like iron man has got loads of suits throughout the comics throughout the movies the cartoons like all of it there are so many different incarnations of his suit that is cool that they're giving us different ones but yeah i mean it's, <laughs> i yeah. always thought i was a big nerd right until i got in until i got involved in marvel legends and found that people can tell the difference between all the different mark suits and to me it just looks red and gold like it does in the movie and that just looks like another <laughs> iron man to me but i there's so many people out there that can tell you that is the mark 20 the mark 30 the mark you know where it's like how can you tell they all look the same the thing is as well is it depends what form of media you're following i suppose because mm -hmm. if you're a big comic book fan having comic book accurate suits that changed for the different storybook arcs of the suits and stuff is very cool if you've got a particular you know a, a particular story arc or a particular era of of comic books that you enjoyed and they are finally giving you a suit that fits in that storyline or that era then this is great it is really great but for the for the kind of the the casual collector, like you say, is just another Iron Man. Yeah, but then again, they, uh, there, there was some in this wave that did get my attention. Um, Whiplash, Whiplash, so yeah, the comic the comic version of Whiplash. Sorry, these pi these pictures are horrible, but but you um, know what? Like again, this is cool. It's a comic book style version of Whiplash, which is is wicked. But I still really wish we had a decent like movie version of whiplash just because he looked cool like he looked Mickey very Rock. cool but yeah i don't think we'll ever get that because of old mickey rook 
Aye. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. No, Rourke. So, I did like that. I did like that shot, to be honest. I thought that was, that was really cool. That is yeah. a good shot. Um, but yeah, like someone, Bethany Beth said there, the car, retro car backs look nice. They do. They're very nice car backs indeed. But we have obviously seen them. We've seen these already. They used the Iron Man car back once or twice, didn't they? On yeah, on and they've used it in the box it. as well. They, they did an Iron Man in, on that card back, didn't they? And then they did like a boxed version for the gun or something. Yeah, that's a little it. while ago. Um, so they're cool. Um, they were cool. So yeah, there's another another Iron Man in gold and red. Couldn't tell you what yeah. version it is. I can't remember which one this is. <laughs> so um, because at one point I could, but. Mr. Yeah. Nefarious, I did, I did like that one. That one, to be fair, that one did. I do like that. Not fussed about that at all. Count Nefaria. Not oh. fussed about that one at all. How about how about how about Gold Iron Man? You know what? Again, I think this is the one that annoyed me the most because <laughs> it's, it's 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 Iron Man with a skirt, like and. <laughs> It is comic book accurate that we had this gold, um, this gold Iron Man with the skirt, and yeah, it, it's it, it's good. It's a good nod for people like who want that. But I was just kind of like, it's the the one that they gave us in the Avengers um, Beyond Earth's Mightiest was cool because it was a Mark One. I've still got one myself because so I was like, this is a cool figure. I'm keeping it. And this is just a retooled version of that with the skirt in a different color. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not fast. Bethany, Beth in the comments, shot fight, shots fired, my friend, shots fired. <laughs> um, you know what though? Like I will, like I said, Marvel Legends and UK based, I had everything, like literally everything for so long for so long um and like i said between when they relaunched as the um like infinite uh, infinity series or whatever it was called back mm. in 2014 i had every single figure that was released from 2014 to 2022 i think it was like mid covid every single figure every single special release every kind every single builder figure everything and the fatigue hit fatigue yeah. it and it was kind of like you know what i i'm a big supporter of hasbro i'm a big supporter of marvel i'm a big supporter of marvel legends but i didn't need them all and <laughs> there's so much more that my interests like lie in like that i like i like power rangers I like ghostbusters i like turtles I like he-man mm -hmm. like street fighter i like indiana jones i like jurassic park you know i like all those not even getting started on the retro stuff or the more modern stuff like invincible and lord of the rings and all the rest of it putting all of that time and energy to just marvel legends the fatigue hit and i was like i don't need 55 versions of wolverine i love wolverine mm -hmm. i i can have 10 and be just as big a fan as somebody with 100 yeah that's for me i was all about the the x-men and then i stupidly started getting fomo because the groups were booming at the time and everyone were trying to get the figures first and i fell into that trap and i before i knew what i was i had because I, I had i had literally every single x-men figure that was ever released and i started going back and buying old ones like the old black and gray warpath and i spent a fortune on him and you know what i mean I, I was going back and buying that I, then i sort of branched out to like the deadpool characters because he fits in with x-men and i kind of yeah. kept it contained and then all of a sudden i tried to start collecting spider-man i started trying to collect the avengers and i was like right i'm gonna have a, a retro avenger set i want a retro avenger set and yeah. I, was, I started getting mcu and i just fell down the rabbit hole and yeah. it got, all got far too much and I, I literally had three boxes in the corner of my room full of marvel legends that didn't see the light of day and i'm like what am i doing just yeah. to get a video online which is so <laughs> sad when you think about it i was like uh, just to make said, a video mick said here that's what the mark ii was jacob yeah no i know i know that's what it was and this is what i'm saying is that it is literally a case of they've taken the the, the Mark one that they've given us and repainted it and given it a skirt, which is comic book accurate and works. And for anybody that is collecting in that, to that extent is great to have that Mark one and Mark two next to each other. But 
for me, I'm happy. I've got the Mark One. I. I don't need the Mark Two. And that was the kind of point I was getting to is that it is just a repainted suit. Yes, it, it, it's exactly what the Mark Two was. There you go. Let us side by side. But I, I don't need it. Yeah. There was one figure in there though that did get my spot. My this one. There she is. There yeah. she is. That got my attention too. To be fair, the shield. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mix. Mix doing a little post. Um. Yeah. So this one for me was th this one. Collectors fans have been crying out for like She Hulk in the leotard for ages absolutely ages um and i'm really pleased that we actually finally get one this is a good this is a good figure this is a good release yeah this is the one that got my interest yeah no it got my attention too, to this one um i like i like this version of, of she hulk definitely um that that's the one i've always wanted them to release because she'll yeah. fit in with all the classic avengers in that in that sort of in, in that costume so I always preferred that one over the torn jeans any day. Yeah. And there's the lineup together. So pre-orders Tuesday, April 2nd at 1 p.m. EST. Check your fan channels and Hasbro Pulse. Yeah, it's all right. Pretty good. Then we've got some Ghostbusters. Finally. Yeah. 118th scale, 1984 Ecto-1. Looks nice. Yeah. This did get my attention, along with these bad boys, the O-Ring 375-inch Ghostbusters. Yeah. I like the look of these, to be honest. I know they're, they're like, they're like old-school O-Ring figures. That's like proper nostalgic right there. Yeah. But for anyone that's a 375 collector... Um, a three and three quarter inch, uh, three and three quarter inch collector. These are brilliant because you know if you do collect a handful of different things, we you know we've been waiting for a, a decent three and three quarter inch. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But I haven't seen. I don't know whether they've been out yet. I've only seen these in photos like this. I haven't. So with a lot of the others, like the Marvel Legends, the Iron Man wave, for example, there was high-res production pictures released almost instantly after the, the convention. I, have they been released for this? Because I haven't seen them. It's Sorry, it's what, sorry I will, I'll read the comments there. I do apologise. Have they <laughs> done any hands-on images yet, do you mean? No, no. So the for the Marvel Legends, the yeah. high-res images came out almost instantly. Yeah. I haven't seen them for these, but that's only because I yes. haven't been stuck to my um, they have released some images for these now, and they've also got some hands-on pictures. All these figures were more or less available at the Hasbro booth at WonderCon. Oh, they had a lot oh, of prototypes, things like that. So, I mean, the, the, there's a lot of like hands-on pictures as well. People were like, uh, there's some photos of some guys online that are like, pi like are picking them up and actually looking at them and stuff. So, Hasbro were allowing people to like, you know, you know, touch them and everything. So, oh, wicked, yeah. No, see, so you know what? I I could I could go for this this set and that that Ecto one. Yeah, sorry, it was, it, uh, sorry, Mister Spectre were put were putting me off in the comments. There, I was trying to read his ginormous post. Yeah, <laughs> just saying that. Sorry, sorry that our our knowledge was not completely perfect tonight, Mister Spectre. Um, but yeah, I'm very. I don't ever pretend to be a master of all things. I've never ever once confessed to be a know it all of Marvel because I genuinely don't. I genuinely don't. I just collect action figures that I like the look of. People, that's yeah. I collect bits of plastic for a hobby. I don't. I don't need to know every single single piece of detail about every single franchise. That's yeah. never what I've been about. <laughs> Not what we so, do here. Just putting that out there. Not what we do here. Um, but no, I, I would quite happily pick up three and three quarter inch. Much to Ryan's. Um, disgust or pleasure i don't know where, how we feel about that but i would quite happily pick up a three and three quarter inch collection of ghostbusters along with that um 118th scale ecto one uh, ecto one i think it would look really cool on the shelf um, oh yeah 100 percent. yeah it's i'm a bit annoyed as well that because obviously fan home have done ecto one as well haven't they what the, the 
fan home did an XO one like a yes. Part of Sorry, a builder the builder black XO one. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what. I'm, I'm really disappointed. I didn't follow through on. Oh yeah, but how long would it take you to build it? Come on, how how, how much of Optimus Prime have you built now? One one leg, and you're on like issue ten or something, Daft. Issue ten. I'm on issue. I'm I'm touching issue forty at the moment. Oh Jesus! And you've only, how much have you built? A leg. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm a little bit behind. So I've got my law. Hang on, let's have a look. So the last package, everything falling down behind me. The last package um, that they sent me was, ah, oh, there you go, issue 36. So I've got five issues here that I've just filmed the build for mm. um, up to issue 36. And the next five are in the post. So that will take me up to 41, issue 41. Wow yeah so yeah yeah there's a lot of a lot of books right, i've done this so this many so many that that many that that many so far um and yeah it's but it's an incredible figure an incredible figure and i think the the more i'm building this optimus prime the more disappointed i um the more disappointed i'm at i didn't didn't do the ecto one just because I think it would have looked really good with like the plasma series figures, but yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, it's. It, it, would you ever get it complete? That's my thing. I've never like every time fan home contact me and say, "Would you like to do the buildable ro like Robocop? Would you like to do the?" I always decline that. The the ones I always do are like the like the Star Wars ships and stuff like that. The ones that I know are die cast. Each one's individual. I can post them as and when I want. I don't need to do like a build of every single one. You know what I mean? So that that would drive me bonkers. Oh no! I think if I was building more than one at a time, it would it would frustrate me. But. I'm enjoying it. I mean, to be honest with you, I've never, I've never seen through an entire build, um, and that's one of the reasons why I was quite happy to partake in that with them because they were like, "Do you want this Optimus Prime? Do you know? Do you want to build this Optimus Prime?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I really do." Um, and because of him obviously being a a robot, like, and a vehicle, and like obviously a transformer in that respect, but I just thought it worked really well with the kind of the subscription build that yeah it would look quite cool so yeah no I, i'm really loving it i'm really loving it i fully you know anyone that kind of has jumped on board and started it like i'm pretty confident you'll be enjoying what you see so far because i'm definitely enjoying it <laughs> so McF uh, mcfarlane was also at wondercon yeah and they've started to drop some new stuff from their end. So more of the movie maniacs being uh, introduced, including the 40 year old virgin, the big yeah. Lebowski, uh, in that movie. I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Just, they're all kind of cult films. They're all kind of cult classics in that respect. So I think that these are very much like, yeah, I think now, I think they'll do, I think they'll do all right. Then we've got the matrix. Movie Maniacs as well, Neo and Trinity. Yeah. Then we move on to the DC lines. Um, Booster got, Gold. Yeah, Booster Gold. And uh, we've got Mr. Freeze. I like, I like that, Mr. Freeze. Yeah, that Mr. feels Freeze. very nostalgic, that Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Who's the green guy? I have no clue, mate. I'm not even going to attempt. Can't even read what that says. Um, I, don't I, I don't know who he is. He's not a character I'm familiar with. And uh, then we've got Robin as well. It's the Tim Drake version of Robin. Yeah, that looks cool. Yep. Um, then we've got... Um, we, we have... Uh, the guy on the end, we've seen this figure before, right? Or was this the first time we saw him? Yeah. I feel like we've seen the Batgirl as well, haven't we, from this wave? We've kind of seen yep. bits of this before. Yeah, yeah. Thought so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. The guy on the end, I literally had to do a double take because I assumed that was Jason X. It took me a moment to realise it's not Jason X. Uh. Look at that um, face. Bethany, Beth said ambush bug. I need a bit of help with the DC characters because I don't know. Apparently that's don't know it looks like Jason X, but apparently it's Sportsmaster. And okay. yeah, I'm, I'm not the reverse flash. And I've got no guy yeah. These ones are these aren't the ones I got excited about. I've just I'm just no, going no. through the slides. No, going through the slides. I, we're, going for him. we're going for him. Um I like the fact that they are smaller builder figures though. 
Um, mm-hmm. So what, four figures and then you get the fifth. Yeah, four figures and you get the fifth. So it's Plastic Man is the uh, is the builder figure in that one. Yeah, I do like that Superman though. That's the, the blue and red. Yeah, it looks nice. When he separates and becomes like the blue version and the red version and... Like I, I always quite like the the design of those. So there, yeah, that's that's a figure I could potentially pick up. And that's the '90s Aquaman, isn't it? Is it '90s, early 2000s Aquaman, where they were kind of like trying to beef him up and change his look a little bit from being yeah. a campy Aquaman. Um, Andy Hyde said, "Green, La- Green Lantern, Manhunter, Robot was the figure next to Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash. Uh-huh. Well, I think uh, the, the, you know the the McFarlane figures are good. They they." They're doing it. They're covering all bases. Here they are. This though. is this is what got me a little bit, a little bit, mm, yay, a little bit excited, a little bit too much. Uh, Val Kilmer, Batman, finally, yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Obviously, we're getting uh, Robin as well in the classic red and green from the movie because obviously we've got the Batman and Robin one, which I've got on the shelf behind me, but Two Face and Riddler as well. Oh yeah. yeah. We've been talking about these for months now, haven't we? Us two. We've, we, we, yeah. we've said so many times the need to do this wave. It was inevitable. I'm just annoyed that I didn't jump on it at the beginning because now that they are doing these figures, it's like I'd want them all. I'd want all of the movie versions. But Yeah, well, they've, on, they've only done... You can still get most of them. I mean, I mean, the Batman and Robin figures, I think, are still in stock with comics and cocktails and a few other places. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The, the, you, can, you can still get them. Um, I was oh. never bothered for the because I, I was never bothered for the Bale Batman stuff because that I've I was never a massive fan. I know that's sacrilege to say, but that one was never my favorite Batman films. I like these old the older ones from the childhood. They've got I, I've got more feelings towards them. So like I wanted I always wanted Two Face Riddler so I can stand them next to you know a Poison Ivy and Freeze, and then I hope they release Jack, Jack Nicholson and Catwoman and Penguin and they've got to haven't they really? They ha- at this point they have to do now. Keep keep going backwards. Yeah, now that they've done these ones, it's it's almost you know. I know there's not really anything else you could really do as a builder figure in this wave. But the the bat from the sequence where Val Kilmer's in the the Riddler's machine and he sees the bat flying towards him, that is the builder figure. The kind of builder figure that no one really thought about. Yeah, it's a, it's a random one. It's like it's like that time when Multiverse years ago did that random Batman grappler gun. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It was a builder thing. So yeah, it's it's a bit different. I but, had, um... I had a couple of parts of that. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I kind of want to build it because I've got a part of it, but yeah. We haven't seen any form of, as far as I'm aware, anyway, people can correct can correct me if I'm wrong, but these are the only shots we've seen of these so far. So we've not seen what accessories are going to come with them. I can only assume that Riddler hopefully comes with his bowler hat and his cane. and Because uh, that I would kind of want that hat for Riddler. Yeah. And um, okay, but then again, he's got a jacket as well. There's so many. I wonder if they're going to release because I know I know McFarlane like 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 to do chase variants and gold label, and so I wonder whether we're going to see a couple of variants of J- of Jim Carrey's Riddler down the line. Because like yeah. I can see them repainting that figure in silver and making him glittery. Yeah, for that end of you know for the end of the film, I can yeah. see them doing that. So yeah, I, I've got a feeling we're going to see a couple of variants on that one. He's just such a good Riddler. He really was. So these are the other ones that, yeah, if you're wanting to go out for the uh, the Bale series of stuff, that's all them figures. They're all available. What was that blue one? Oh, it's the... That's the Joker in the... Yeah. 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 I wasn't a fan of that one. Yeah. But these ones... Ooh. Starfire, finally. Not in the costume we wanted, but, you know, in, in a decent yeah. costume. And that penguin one, that penguin is just reminiscent of the 90s toys as well. Oh, yeah. There's some high-end glossy pictures on uh, Toy Arc of that one, and it looks awesome. It looks yeah. awesome. And, of course, Cap- Captain Boomerang there from Suicide Squad. Yep. Looks very cool. The Tumblr's coming. Oh, nice. Along with Morgan Freeman. Oh, wow. That's cool. Mm. They are going all out at McFarlane, aren't they, really? Let's oh, be yeah. Honest. I think, to be fair, it's what people want. People wanted the movie stuff, so he's given us the movie stuff. I just still can't believe that Hasbro haven't jumped in on the 
the vehicle side of things. I think um, they've they've given us a couple now, haven't they? They were like, like Lobo's bike. Uh, they've given us the um, the Batmobile for Kilmer. No, for no, I mean, I sorry, mean for, Hasbro. Hasbro. Oh, has Hasbro. Something. Sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, Hasbro are never going to touch vehicles in a thousand years for Marvel. Because McFarlane are doing it, and just and it's just the right amount. It's just mm. you know Hasbro started off with those Rider series, but they were just kind of basically repaints of the same bikes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and he said, check McFarlane's Facebook page. They've got some pictures up of those three now. Yeah. So, yes, we will. Sergeant Rock, um, another character I'm, I'm excited about. Cool. Grab me. I've Super read loads Boy. of comics of Sergeant Rock, so I'm, I'm excited about him. And, yeah, Superboy and Batman. Uh, I couldn't tell you what variant that is, but, yeah, Batman, another Batman fig. Which, what's the brackets there behind Superboy? Oh, it's just his name. Okay. I, I wonder whether it was a particular type of a particular version or whether it was based on something. Yeah. Do you think we're going to go down the lines of um, uh, Titans, the, the TV show? Do you think they're going to give us that? Because now that they're doing the movie stuff, <clears throat> they could potentially, I mean, there's lots of movie stuff to still catch up on, but there's also TV stuff they could touch on. I think they're playing into the nostalgia vibe more than the modern stuff because there's a load of modern stuff they could give us technically. Um, yeah. You know, with from you know Arrow, Flash. Uh, there's tons of stuff they could give us, but I think they're playing more into the nostalgia factor. They need to. They need to do Smallville. Smallville first. Like once they've done, if they do keep keep going, once they've done eighty nine Batman. Yeah, you know, once they've done the you know the the the. the keaton batman stuff again i have feeling they might touch on maybe halle berry catwoman and films like that the films that are kind of were crap at the time but we love now or like people have grown to like over the years a bit more cult classic-y interesting i just and want I an aquaman that kind of stuff. i want a smallville aquaman action film yeah. right now. <laughs> that's what i want the smallville the... i could see him doing i could see him doing small because again that that would play into that old school nostalgia yeah. It's old enough now to be considered nostalgia. You know what I mean? Smallville, um, there was that weird kind of "We're not the Justice League, but we're the Justice League" episode. Did you do you remember that? Where there was like mm -hmm. five of them that teamed up. I would like to see that as a as a box set. <laughs> the the dodgy made for TV Justice League. Um, Northern Nomad said McFarlane gets too much negative criticism, and you know what? I kind of agree having a look mm -hmm. at all these like there are some seriously good releases there i just i'm not a huge fan of the figures the way that the figures are made and i think that's what lets it down for me is i don't i think that the detail and the sculpting on a lot of them are very good um but yeah there's just some the they're very limited with the articulation and for kind of posability and action figure photography and things like that you know yeah yeah, they it's the McFarlane at the end of the day, so all McFarlane figures are the same. Uh, they, they do they the durable enough. They're easy to customize. It's only the same as like I suppose Hasbro do the same thing with theirs. They're, theirs are all on similar books, aren't they? You know what I mean? They're all yeah. It's just their way of their doing. It's just their way of doing things. You know what I mean? It's just different to what we used to because Hasbro put out so much. I think. Um. Mick has said that he would buy the F out of a Smallville, especially the yeah. Green Arrow. Um, Andy, interestingly, <coughs> they did release a Titans TV wave, but it never made it over to the UK. Um, with Beast Boy as the Baff. There we go. I didn't know that. I've missed that. Um, and what, McFarland? Again, yeah. Mick again. I don't remember that. Justice League, not the Justice League, in Smallville was Ace. I just remember getting really hyped about that episode. Um yeah, I don't remember this Titans TV wave, so I'm going to have to Google that. But then I don't really yeah. follow McFarlane's releases as close as some of the others. So, yeah. Yeah, and then, then they were just showing off the ones we've, we have seen previously, I believe, and they're including the digital collectible. So collect all three to build Animal Man. And then we move on to Superpowers, and they've got Batman animated series. So there's some more of those things coming out soon. Wow. Yeah, so these, are the, like... these are the animated figures that we should have. Well, we had most. We we did have most of these, or some of these, with 
uh, towards you know the because like the mask of the phantasm i've still got that as part of, from the two pack yeah so i mean we did get that one we did i think did we get that bane i think um that that poison ivy came out towards the very end of the multiverse line i don't think it was that version of bane mm. and i think that that batman with the sorry it's the the C- uh, cyborg, cyborg batman isn't it cyborg batman uh he came out at the very tail end of the old uh the old mattel days yeah um then we've got the uh the music maniacs so we we know from earlier in the week i think i spoke about them on my live stream but we're getting ozzy and alice cooper but they've also added to the lineup that we're getting eddie and uh, rob zombie as well oh i imagine uh i maiden's eddie yeah that's cool to be fair, Ozzy Osbourne look, look, looks weird, but Alice Cooper looks spot on. Alice Cooper looks good. Yeah. So he, he's one that I'd be tempted to grab. Yeah. But yeah. Ozzy just looks too odd. The, the Ozzy, from here, it just, yeah, looks like he's wearing, wearing a weird hat. He's wearing a weird hat. Uh, it's from his it's from his album. It's, it's, it's the more modern Ozzy, which I, w- I wish they'd have gone for the old school Ozzy, if I'm honest. Uh, mm. But it's, the, it's based on his more modern uh, stuff. Uh, but I mean, Rob Zombie as well looks okay. I'd probably go for a Rob Zombie. He looks like a Walking Dead character from here. He does. He really does. Uh, then we got some Spawn. Cool. I'm not. I'm not massively into Spawn, so I'm just gonna flick through these. Oh, there's yeah. another one image. There you go. So there you go. That was the McFarlane line. Yeah, I think they they showed up. McFarlane. They they mm. showed up and and. Oh, the Batman Forever off. figures alone, kind of. The, the the Batman Forever figures were what everyone wanted to see. Yeah. So I'm going to go back and rewatch the Batman films from the beginning. I'm going to rewatch them and see if I'm as attached to them as I remember I am. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like Keaton's Batman, but I find that when I watch them back now, I've got a special place for Batman 2, you know, Batman Returns. Yeah. But that that's for a whole different reason that's between me and my psychiatrist. Um <laughs> That's for late night geek week. No, 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 no. It's nothing to do with Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, no, no. Imagine, right? Imagine this. You're a disabled kid, right? That's born with differences. Okay. You're gonna make me feel bad for laughing. No, no, no. This is genuinely. This is a genuine like thing for me. And um, I remember that this literally came out when I was talking to people. And literally, I felt I always hated Batman in that movie because basically, you got to think, Penguin was just a kid that was born with deformities and his parents put him in a basket and shoved him in the sewers and got rid of him. I was a kid that was born with disabilities watching this film that oh, felt different no. to my friends. I know it's deep in it. And I'm watching this film back going, why did they get rid of this kid? You know, it's just, it's, you know, it's, there's not wrong yeah. with him. He's just a dude. He's just got difference. He's, you know, he's, he's disabled or whatever. That's wow, how I man. saw it. And I'm like, he's the, and then people portrayed him as the villain. I'm like, what the fuck? So to oh. me, it was it's got a very deep, weird thing in my brain as that movie. You know so, what? I'm now, I've told you I'm going to go back and rewatch them, and now I, I'm not going to be able to watch it without <laughs> thinking about it. But it's the, same, it's the same with X-Men. That's what gravitated yeah. me towards the X-Men comics. I've said this before. You've got to yeah. imagine, I, when I was a kid, I didn't know any other disabled kids because I grew up in a very small town in Pontefract. There was no other disabled kids around me. It wasn't until I went to high school that I met other kids in wheelchairs. So, yeah. like, for me, I grew up on my own with false leg, you know, with, with my prostate leg, my colostomy, all my other difficulties, being, wow. being, being, being in hospital for the first, like, six, seven years of my life. No one else I knew had to go, go through this crap. So I was like, why am I so different? And then I find this comic book called X-Men. Now, that is my attachment like, to Marvel right there. Wait a minute. I'm a frigging superhero. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, that's amazing. No. And you know what? I'd never, like, I totally get it. I totally agree with that as a perspective on the film now. But I never saw. I is never it, yeah. It. How ignorant is that of my kind of? <laughs> but yeah, never seen. So that's that my. Enough. That's kind of my affinity to penguin. Never. I always say I've got an affinity for penguin, and that's kind of the deep little meaning of why why I love penguin so much. Is yeah. my character. Not only do I look do I look like Danny Vito a little bit, but you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, cool. he's definitely he's definitely cool. my he's my character. Um, cool. But yeah. Uh, what the hell are we on about? Yeah, so uh, the, I was saying when I, uh, before I went off on a tangent, my attachment is always to Forever and Batman and Robin. They're the ones Why? I watched the most as a kid. Why Batman and Robin? Because they were the ones that I remember at the time when 
when the original Batman figures came out, like like when the original Batman films came out, I was born in I was born in '89, so I do, I remember it on VHS. I don't remember it coming to cinemas or anything like that. I don't remember the hype of it. Mm. Whereas I was old enough to remember Forever and Batman and Robin and live through like go through the hype. Yeah. Of the figures coming out, and that, I remember the Christmas that Bat, the Batman Rob, uh, Robin came out. I had all the toys. I had all the different two packs of figures, and I had the stupid uh, Nerf gun, and I had all of it. I literally had all of it. So like your Batman and Robin and, and Batman Forever were the two that I grew up watching the most. Yeah. Do you know what the the I, I was reading as well about the Batman films? Cause you know, Kiss from a Rose. Yeah. Like that, like that song, like single handedly, like saved Seal's career. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't even like written for the film it was used for the film and was because of all the marketing around the movie do you remember that song from from the movie or do you remember the video game song because it was played that often in the 90s you the can run game. but there's no escape oh, you yeah. can hide that one yeah. you can fight and never win when good battles evil the real game begins yeah. no, i remember the, that for batman and forever but i'd never i i'd never remembered the seal song no see for me it's the other way around <laughs> like literally i hear the ba -da -ba -ba -da, and i'm like batman <laughs> batman <laughs> but it was a case of the I, I can't remember don't quote me on this but the article i was reading basically um seal like knew the producer or knew the director or something like that and they basically went to him and asked if he had a song that they could use on the film Mm. Or, or whether he could write a song or something like that but he was like basically at the turning point of his career where it was like you know and then and that's why the, the song has got nothing really to do to with, do with the it film. <laughs> because it was like he played it and it was supposed to he was supposed to feature it in a in a in a small scene in the film or something to basically give him a boost or whatever and ended up using it as the title um title song for the film and so it just blew up but i, I can't remember i have to i'm gonna have to reread the article or re-watch the video i can't remember which one where andrew was but and i'll come back with the exact fact but when i watched <laughs> it and i was like oh and that that makes so much sense as to why that song had nothing to do with the film whatsoever like yeah. there's, there's no reference or no no correlation between the song and the film but yeah Yes, I am a young boy. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm 35. I mean, I'm knocking on now. But uh, I'm just trying to catch up with the uh, the comments now. I like Andy Hyde's comment. He just he thought it was just because that when I'm not on camera, I dress in a top hat, tails, and have a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> bring that, bring gonna, back as soon as, as soon as the cam the camera goes off, I put a monocle on him. Where's my fish? It is. You. <laughs> it is. You should see this before we go live. I'm like. So the monocle, quick. Oh. <laughs> um, and Northern Nomad as well said he was also Hawk in Titans. Yes, Aquaman. Smallville's Aquaman was Hawk in Titans, and of course is Reacher. Um, but yeah, I you know what? I completely didn't associate the two. I that's just the pennies just dropped now. That of course he was Hawk in Titans, which was <laughs> Hawk and Dove in Titans are two of my favourites. Two of my favourites um but there we go was there any other toy news because we're obviously running close to finish time um no there was just all there was a, bit, a few more of that like high glossy images that have come out now of all the figures that were kind of released there was some gi joe stuff where i'm not even going to attempt to go through gi joe because i know nothing about gi no. joe i literally know no. nothing no um you don't want to no, that was kind of by us not knowing the details of the exact figures and the date. We, we've upset Mick enough this evening. Let <laughs> let let's leave him be. Other than that, uh, the the Fre the Frazetta girls ice fire and ice tigra officially got uh, came out for pre order. You can yep, get her uh, from the Frazetta girls website, but I believe um, the whole shebang has got her listed up as well for about eighty quid. Sweet. Woo! On the expensive side, but she looks cool. Yeah. Uh, the only other, the only other figure that deserves a little shout out this week, I've got to say it. I've got to, I've got to get, I've got to, got to show you it. So uh, you know me, I like the occasional wrestling figure. I, I can't not. While this one was loading up the images. One thing I've got to say as well is that the Spider-Man wave, the Marvel Legends Spider-Man wave with Scarlet Spider and all that kind of stuff, yeah. finally has started landing 
in people's hands over here in the UK. And the groups were rife with people commenting about the particular place that they had pre-ordered, whether it was, you know, in demand, comics and cocktails, whatever. And everyone just kind of um, complaining about the individual retailer, thinking that they had delayed it. But obviously in the UK, we had a massive delay and they are finally here. They are finally here and people are picking them up and they're landing in people's hands. And they look pretty good. So I cannot wait to have a couple of them in my hands as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, Jack O'Lantern and um, uh, what's she called? Ho Hallow's Eve dropping. Because I've will I've got them to on pre-order. Yeah. Um, and he said, if you listen closely, you can just hear Mick booing off now in his room like the scene that I've mentioned. And a proper shout out. <laughs> Mick just said, let's be fair, lads. I am very, very drunk. <laughs> we love you mick uh, it's all in jail. andy why would you do that because I, I see that stupid scene on tiktok about a thousand times a day a shootout is a shootout like a western <laughs> <laughs> i love that film so much it's so quotable you know i'm in it oh yeah are you in that one yeah mate, i'm in mate, that film. how do you keep getting in movies i am in that film i am 100 percent in that film <laughs> <laughs> um if you have a look when they when he takes i can't remember the name of his girlfriend now yeah yeah i know you mean but when it's snowing and he takes her mm -hmm. down the high street and he stands yeah. across from the hideaway club and he goes yeah you know that place and he looks over and it pans over to the hideaway club i'm the doorman <laughs> <laughs> that's cool 100 percent. yep i worked on a night it was an overnight shoot they basically transferred this um road um in um in london they transferred it and turned it into a you know the, the back in the day and stuff and all the fake shot uh fake fronts and everything like that and the hideaway club literally was a door and you kind of went in around the corner so when they were filming you only ever had like two or three people going round because mm. then they had to come back out again um, and then obviously we went to a different location to do the inside stuff, but yeah, I was what they classed as like a featured extra cause I had my own action call. So the two, there's me and another guy that a doorman and they kind of like actioned everyone else. And then they gave us our action. And basically my, my, my kind of acting was literally <laughs> it, was, it was mental. You only see me for like a split second and obviously I'm an extra, so it's not credited, but clean shaven. I mean, my black coat. Um, and I'm the doorman of the hideaway club. So, <laughs> oh, I did tick off saying in my bucket list because in one of the trailers for the film, they show that scene and mm. they give you a sort of a, 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 like an aerial shot of the road and you can see me. And I was like, I made it into the trailer. That was on my bucket list. Never mind about being in a film. I was like, I want to be in a trailer. But yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> so, there you go. Don't thank me every day. But yeah, my final figure that I, that I wanted to share with you, just because it amused the hell out of me, was this Hulk Hogan. Marvel Legends, sorry, Marvel Legends, WB Legends Series 23 uh, will give us uh, a couple of new figures, but this Hulk Hogan's on there, and it's the guitar playing Hulk Hogan. It is. I am a real American. <laughs> it's that, ain't it? I'm just loving the fact that this is older, balding Hulk Hogan at this point. Yeah. But yeah, it's the, it's the proper with his cowboy boots and everything. Yeah, I am a real cool. American. You know what? That is uh, such an entrance tune. Like, it is. yeah, <laughs> I can listen to that all the time. You know what? Uh, Mick said, "Hang on, is Jacob taking the Mick?" Um, I'm going to watch Legend again to see that. Um, you can do. If we weren't at the tail end of the show, I'd get it up now on my phone and just show you. But maybe next week, maybe next week, I'll show you a screenshot. But 100, I am, I am there. <laughs> um, there we go. That's it. That's it for the for the thing. Um, it is a bank holiday weekend, so we do appreciate mm. everyone that has come and joined in. Um, we were toying around with the idea of kind of moving the show date because it would be a bank holiday weekend. But we thought, you know what? Nah, we haven't got anything better to do than sit here and talk about toys on a Sunday night, really, <laughs> have we? So um, yep. there we go. Um, next week, episode 146, which edges us ever so closer to the big 150, episode yeah. 150 which we're hoping to do something special for. Um, yeah, watch this space and we'll see if we announce something. Um, got anything massive going on this week? Anything coming? Anything going? Um, no, I've got my, like I say, I've got my Stumble Guys stuff to open, but I've not got anything major on my, on my uh, 
watch list at the moment. It's a bit quiet at the minute on the action figure front. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go and try to see Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla yeah, that's, my, that's on my list this week. I think I'm going to go uh, Wednesday, Thursday, see Kong. I, I did see somebody say in the comments earlier, has anyone seen it yet? Um, yeah, it no. Shelley. Shelley, no, we haven't yet, but we, we will. We yeah, uh, Frankie in the groups, uh, Frankie French, she, put, uh, she was commenting that a lot of films recently are getting critics going like crap saying how, how, crap, how crap the films are and then on 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 rotten tomatoes on the viewership you know the viewers comments and stuff are all golden so yeah. i mean this was the same like godzilla versus kong a lot of people are saying it you know it's a lot a lot a lot of the critics were saying that it's crap and it's just a crappy monster movie but all the audience so, so far have enjoyed it that i've seen and that that was the same with ghostbusters it got panned didn't it by critics saying it were no good but everyone's enjoyed it that i know yeah yeah, great. Likewise, likewise. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. Um, cool, 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 cool. Right, that's about it. Episode one forty-five. Um, of course, if you are watching live, thank you very much for joining in with the comments. We do appreciate you. Uh, there's been a lot to talk about this week, so we have tried to get through it all as quick as we can. Um, if you're watching us on catch up, sorry, what is it they need to put in the comments? Hashtag catch up crew. Hashtag catch up crew. Um, thank you very much. Come back next week, Sunday, same time, same place. Doesn't matter where you're watching, as long as you're watching us. Um, episode 146 next week. Thank you very much for watching. We will catch you next week. Till then, keep it geek. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and of course, subscribe. Tune in next week for another live show. Until then, keep it geek. Stay up to date at www.geekweekinreview.co.uk.